second king chapter 4. Actually, we are going to read verse 3 to 4. But we all know the story is from verse 1 to 7. It's the story of the widow who was destitute and ran to a man of God for help and was given instructions, she obeyed the instructions, and her problems were over. The aspect I want to look at is actually, who is your true friend? Who is the one that you can be sure we never leave you not forsake you in the time of crisis. Who can you trust 100%? Your dad? Your dad may love you, but you cannot rely on him 100%. One, at the time you need him most, he may die. Two, for one reason or the other, he may disappoint. And if we are to go by uh, the stories in the Bible, you discover in Genesis 22 from verse 1 to 18, Genesis 22 from verse 1 to 18, that when Abraham said to Isaac, let's go and sacrifice to God. And Isaac was asking, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And the father said, God will provide. Isaac didn't know that the father was saying, you are going to be the sacrifice. Can you trust your son? Can you take your son to be that friend who will never leave you, never forsake you? Well, if we check Luke chapter 15, from verse 11 to 13, Luke 15, 11 to 13, the Bible tells us that a man had two sons. And one of the two sons said to his father, you have lived too long. Give me my inheritance. I want to enjoy. You are standing between me and uh, life the way I want to give it. You know the story. Can you trust your husband to love you all the way? In Genesis chapter 12, from verse 11 to 15, Genesis 12, from verse 11 to 15, Abraham said to Sarah, when we get to Egypt, tell the people, you are not my wife, you are my sister. So they can take you away from me and my life will be spared. Or your husband will be ready to sacrifice you so that he can live. What about your wife? Can you trust your wife 100%? She would love me no matter what. Well, it will be Job chapter 2. And you read it maybe from verse 1 to 9. Job 2 from verse 1 to 9. You discover that after Job lost everything and then became sick again, the wife said to him, Sir, Cause God and die. The implication is simple. Hey, die so I can marry somebody else. When we go through the scriptures, we always think that, oh, the greatest example of friendship is David and Jonathan. But when you examine their story very closely, you will discover
discovered that Jonathan had a plan. Read 1 Samuel chapter 18 from verse 1 to 4. 1 Samuel 18 from verse 1 to 4. Jonathan gave everything he was wearing to David as a sign of friendship. The prince gave everything to an ordinary poor boy to show, ah, we are friends. But if you study what he gave very closely, you will discover that he did not give him his shoes. He gave the sword, he gave the, he gave the, the dress, he gave everything, but he kept the shoes. Why? In order to let this fellow know, okay, whatever I've given you, I can still take it back. Because in the olden days, according to Ruth chapter 4, verse 7, Ruth chapter 4, verse 7, any contract is not valid unless it is signed by you taking off your shoe and giving it to the other fellow. In other words, anything you give me, you can take it back if you do not include your shoes. Not only that, he was telling this boy, David, yes, we are friends, but don't forget your position. You are a servant, not a son. Why? Because in the olden days, only children wear shoes, not servants. Uh, Luke chapter 15 that I mentioned earlier, Luke 15, when you read it from uh, verse 12, uh, from verse 17 to 24, Luke 5, 17 to 24, the prodigal son, after wasting all his resources, came back home and said to the father, treat me now as a servant. The father said, no, you are the son. And you will notice when he was asking that they dress him up, he said, give him shoes to show that he's a son. All the time that Jonathan was befriending David, it is because it has become clear to Jonathan this man is going to be the king after my dad. I better make sure I, I, I settle myself with him. First Samuel chapter 20, from verse 41 to 42. First Samuel 20, 41 to 42. He made it clear to David, I know you are going to be doing, but now there is an agreement between us that when you become king, you will not destroy my family. The only friend that you can trust all the way is Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ who will never treat you as a servant. John chapter 1, verse 11 to 12. John 1, 11 to 12. To as many as believed in him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. That's why when they were crucifying him, they didn't crucify him with his shoes on. He dropped the shoes for you. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 to 22, Hebrews 10, 19 to 22, the Bible says, we even have boldness to enter into the odious. We can come into the bedroom of God the Father because of the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 7, from verse 24 to 25, Hebrews 7, 24 to 25, that when he saves, he 
ser tu libertad budista. This morning we should thank God that we have the best friend, and his name is Jesus Christ. And we should pray that nothing will spoil that friendship forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.